Hey, Pretty Bird Flock. So, uh, today I figured I'd make a video of Pretty Bird and me taking a moment to just enjoy nature. I am just right here, sitting on the grass with my silly goose over there. And she's grazing up a storm and she's doing okay. She did trip um, on the way over here on the sidewalk. And I mean, I don't know what it is with her, but she has this thing where she doesn't always pay attention to what's on the ground. So usually I always announce up, up every time there's a step up or down. Well, Pretty Bird didn't pay attention. She was hurrying up. She was excited to get to the grass and it looks like she hurt her little toes in the back. I don't know if you guys can see, but if you walk right there, can you see that she got herself a little bit bloody? It looks like she, uh, she took out the claw. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Um, but she's okay. She doesn't seem to be in pain. It's not an unusual thing to happen, um, to geese sometimes, uh, or to just, you know, animals in general that they might injure their nail if they slip down something that's hard and for her it was the edge of concrete it was a pretty big drop down and uh, I'm gonna do what you know I always do anytime she gets hurt or anything like that which is to uh, clean it apply antibiotic and um, continuously spray it with uh, the special spray that's made for uh, waterfowl and uh, farm animals who um, have scrapes or little cuts and it basically prevents infection it doesn't have an antibiotic in it but um, it helps really well and it um, speeds up the healing process a lot so she should be fine in a couple of days it doesn't appear to be bothering her much um, but I figured I'd let you guys know that pretty bird was uh, not paying attention and got herself hurt now She's okay though. I mean, what do you expect? She's only a year old, you know? And if she's anything, <clears throat> if she's anything like the one half of her mix, of her breed, then Pretty Bird is gonna be needing about two to three years to actually mature because that's how long it takes for Canada geese to actually be fully mature. Um, and she can be impulsive, especially uh, in her first year. They're uh, mostly known to be yearlings, as they're usually called, are known for being impulsive. Um, their hormones kind of drive them crazy. Uh, they're going to be more aggressive or um, more distracted or more excited or um, even startled more because it just there's just a lot of unknown for them still. But... Pretty Bird has been having fun. She's been taking some extra baths the last couple of days because um, other than in the evenings, I really wasn't able to take her out much. And then we just went out to cut some grass for her to graze for a minute for me to cut off some grass to add to her kale and carrot and cucumber and broccoli diet. Um, and of course, her seeds and, and, her, um, and her other mixtures of food. But uh, I was super busy. Um, working on my finals for one of my classes and it always bothers me when this happens like you know something happens and for a couple of days you're just so busy because it has to be done you know whether it's paperwork for some sort of government agency you know for like the VA for us or like for um, uh, the educational program program or applying for uh, loans or grants for college or whatever it is you know when the time takes when, when something like that takes up a lot of time or when you have to clean something thoroughly, like for example, your stove or, you know, or, or your fridge and you spend a whole day doing that and then you're like, oh my gosh, like I didn't get around to taking the goose out to go grazing or in most people's cases, in most people's cases, it's more like uh, I didn't get around to taking the dog out to uh, take a walk other than letting them go potty in the yard. And um, when that happens, I feel guilty. And so I'll take her out in the evenings, which is not her favorite thing in the world, but um, just because in the evenings there's just more threats, less visibility, and geese just don't like that that much. So um, 
I reassure her continuously. And of course, just the visibility is so bad that making a video um, wouldn't exactly be the most logical thing in that moment. So I try to concentrate on recording the baths that she takes um, or the showers, which she loves them. Right, pretty bird? Do you love your showers? Yeah? Is pretty bird like getting in a tub? Pretty bird. Can you say hi, everybody? Say hi, everybody. Pretty bird. Guys, check out how much of her feathers she's actually lost. Look at this. She's like none of her flight feathers are left. She's got like this one left and like maybe two left. Right, pretty bird? Hmm? Pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. Don't take my hair apart. Goo, goo, goo. We've had a couple of people um, actually stop their vehicles and, um, and ask me if she was a pet goose. Or one person actually, um, they asked me how I managed to get a bow on a wild goose. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, I think they were joking or being sarcastic, but it just kind of cracked me up a little bit. But, um, cause that would be a task. I mean, I, I'm not saying I want to see somebody do that, but that would not end well for the human. That's all I'm going to say to that. To a not tame wild Canada goose, for an example. Yeah, no, that would not end pretty. Um, and I recommend you never do that. You should not bother these animals. And it's by the way, against the law actually um to mess with canada geese unless you have a permit to even mess with their nests remove their nests even if they're not using it at the time anything that has to do with canada geese their life disturbing their lives uh shooing them off all those things are not things that you're supposed to do without contacting somebody or having somebody who's an official do it because they are protected that is just a fact and it's an international law um, it's not just the U.S. They are internationally protected. It's called the International Migratory Bird Act of the 1920s. Now, I know I've mentioned this before, but basically the law was created because Canada geese were thought to have been extinct until someone discovered a flock with, I think it was, um, I think 20,000 geese total i mean that was it in the world and there's supposed to be like millions but about twenty thousand were left in the world and they discovered them so um knowing that the canada geese didn't it didn't just affect our ecosystem in the u.s it affected the ecosystem in europe in england um germany france italy i mean canada geese are just about everywhere so you know and then down south for us too like mexico you know all over the us canada um there are so many places iceland like where canada geese actually travel to and or live at or migrate to and migrate through and they were being hunted by everyone in every country in every location and you know people always talk about that you know oh you know canada geese or migrating geese they are the bringers of spring right or the takers of summer. And because when they leave, you know, usually it's the end of the season or when they arrive, it's the beginning of a season. And um, the irony in all that is that people tend to forget that they didn't just see him as a bringer of spring, they also saw him as a bringer of food because everybody was hunting them to sustain their families or to, uh, you know, make money selling the meat and, and using the feathers for blankets and such, and they're down or for clothing and um, you know, uh, I don't want to cut into the hunting subject too much. It's not that I disagree with hunting. It's that I don't necessarily agree personally, just, you know, just me, I wouldn't. I'm not saying about other people, I'm talking about me. Me personally, I wouldn't hunt unless it was to sustain myself or my family. So um, 
for me, hunting as a sport is just not something I would ever be comfortable with doing. Um, but there are also other reasons for hunting, like for an example, uh, population control, which is absolutely necessary to keep the balance in our ecosystem, simply because we have, you know, um, literally gotten rid of all of the natural predators out there, especially in the US. Anyways, though, to get back to the subject, uh, Canada geese were getting extinct because they were literally being hunted by everyone. And people had figured out that while they had young, they would molt. And during their molting process, much like Pretty Bird right now, they would lose all of their, sorry about that. They would lose all of their flight feathers, right? Therefore being unable to fly and escape. And they were more likely to stick around and um, approach the human rather than run away from the human because they had young to protect during the summer. So <clears throat> a lot of people saw this as an opportunity who were hunting for various reasons and went after them during breeding season or during the time that they had goslings when they couldn't fly and they generally do it around that time because they're trying to stay with their children so there's really no reason for them to be flying away because their babies can't fly either by the time their children do start flying as in the goslings get old enough to fly the parents uh, flight feathers have usually grown back and returned and at that point they're able to support their children in learning how to fly but you know, um, people were taking advantage of those times. And because of that, because there was really no rules about how to hunt the geese in any of the countries, pretty much, uh, or mostly, at least from my knowledge, uh, back in the early 1900s and the late 1800s, and for, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of years prior to this, uh, Canada geese were going extinct. They just, you know, they, there was too many people hunting them. No matter where they went, what they did, somebody was always hunting them. And so even when it came to reproduction, to raising their young, they were just never safe. So in conclusion, they just about went extinct. And we uh, almost killed off a very vital part of our ecosystem. And at that moment, when they found this flock in the US, I believe it was in Massachusetts or Washington area, north of New York. I know that much. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't remember the exact location, but there was like this big lake or something out in the middle of nowhere and they discovered 20 or 30,000 Canada geese that are living there and um, they decided to uh, to do something about it because I knew that they needed to keep them alive. So first of all, they would take a few eggs from each nest. Um, not all of the eggs, they would take a couple of eggs from each nest and then hatch those babies and then integrate them into different states to start their own, what they called residential flocks. The reason these were residential flocks was because these goslings had been raised by humans or in some cases by other goose breeds. So they would add the eggs to the eggs of say like a farm goose, like an Emden or a Chinese goose or a Telos. <clears throat> these geese would then be raised but they were never taught to migrate anywhere they were never taught to go anywhere they were taught to stay so that's why in some in many states uh, at, at many of the lakes you can see an influx and a decrease of geese during different times of the year because of migration but you can also notice that there's a large number of geese that seem to be sticking around and those are called the residential geese the residential Canada geese. And um, those are basically the offspring of the geese from the 1920s programs of rehabilitating these animals into the wild and um, and upping their numbers. And uh, because the way that the goose learns how to migrate is once they start to fly, their parents basically help them practice. They fly between two different lakes or three different lakes and such and so forth until the time for migration comes. At that point, they then go with following their parents still, even though they are adults. Again, to mention geese, baby geese will follow their parents for a minimum of 10 months. That is a minimum. They will also stay near their parents and uh, um, their siblings for literally the rest of their lives unless they're male 
which then, if they're male and they mate with a female from a different flock, the male will leave their family's flock to go be with the female's flock because the male follow the females to their nesting grounds rather than the other way around. Uh, the females actually will maintain a very close social relationship with their mother and their sisters. Um, so basically what happens is that when it's time to migrate, the young will follow the mother, right? And then the mother will, and the father, and then they will lead them along with the flock together. They will then fly to wherever it is that their, um, their goal destination is. And once they get to that destination, right? They spend their time there for whatever period of time, whatever the season is at the time, right? And then once it's time to migrate again, they will follow their parents back to where they originated from. And um, Giza's memory is amazing. And not only do they stay with, you know, their parents and their flock for, you know, the remainder of their life, if they're female especially, or if they're male with their new flock, um, but also, once they've done the flight, especially twice, that route is memorized by them for the rest of their life. For an example, if Pretty Bird were to fly away from me, God forbid, I, would, I don't know what I would do if that would happen, right? I know, I know, I know, Mama loves you too. But if Pretty Bird were to fly away from me, um, she would observe the surrounding location of her home. She would pay attention to it. Much like she already knows which house our house is when we walk home. She walks up to our driveway. She walks to our front door. She has no problem figuring out which one our house is. But if she were to fly, she would basically memorize the surrounding area, how it looks from above. And then she would memorize the path that she's taking. And when she's done, whenever she wants to come home, maybe because she migrated or because she misses home or she's trying to get back, she would follow that path backwards back to our house. The likelihood of a goose leaving and not finding their way back home is pretty low. Not saying that it's not possible. It is definitely possible for a goose to be distracted, confused, scared, running from a predator so that they don't pay attention to those pointers, to the landmarks, and get lost. On the other hand, it's also possible that landmarks can change, of course. So for an example, you know, for some reason, throughout one season or another, say, the town could decide to take out a couple of trees in the area and from above really change the landmarks to look nothing like they did before the, fall, uh, the previous year. In that case, it would be very likely for Pretty Bird to get confused and possibly not be able to find her way home. Now, I'm hoping that she never leaves me and I'm not going to encourage her to leave because it is not good for the environment. But to get back to it, basically the young learn where to go, how long to travel, and where to take breaks based on what they're being taught by their parents. And that is how they figure out when to migrate, where to migrate to, how to migrate, what formations to fly in, what is the best formation to keep up in the air, what to do if somebody's injured. All of these rules they learn from their parents. If a goose, a Canada goose for an example, is not raised by fellow Canada geese, they're not going to know any of this and they're not going to know that they're supposed to migrate. So they might have an urge to fly somewhere, but they're likely not going to leave their location for very long. Therefore, as long as they're not attaching to another flock that is migrating, right, they're never going to know to migrate. And good girl. Yep, the bird. Hi. Look at those eyes, though. I love those almond eyes.
Mama loves a pretty bird. Yeah, pretty, pretty. Anyways, but what I was going to say was that, and that's how these residential flocks came to be. It's because these were raised by humans or by domestic geese that did not migrate. And so for an example, here in Arizona, in Scottsdale, there's a very large lake or a couple of lakes or something together. And there's a couple hundred geese that are actually residential geese. And they've lived there for as long as just about anybody can remember. And it's because of this and other countries did similar things to try and integrate the geese back into their country, right? And they started placing laws in place, but because internationally, every country is affected if another country doesn't follow these laws or doesn't protect this goose. So for an example, if America was protecting the geese, right, but a particular flock, say for an example, migrates to England during a certain time of the year, or say to Canada or another country in general, then if that country is not banning the hunt on those geese, there's a very high likelihood that even though one country has placed a ban on the hunt of Canada geese, the other country that hasn't is going to be hunting that goose. Therefore, still lowering the numbers and possibly causing this goose to go extinct. So they discovered basically that what each country is doing is also affecting the other countries because these are migrating geese. And simple as that, animals, they don't see country differences. You know, it's kind of like people say, we need to learn from animals. They don't see color. They don't see race. They don't see ethnicity. They don't see religion. They don't see politics. And they don't see borderlines. So they realized they had to work together. So multiple countries decided to work together that were affected by the Canada goose extinction or like near extinction. And they decided to come up with the law that was the Migratory Bird Act of the 1920s, which was an international agreement. This is the reason why now Canada geese are considered a pest, because it's very difficult to get every single one of those countries that in the 1920s agreed to the circumstances, agreed to this law, to actually all agree to change it in some way or another. Now, each country has managed to make some minor amendments so that they can, you know, do certain things or have hunting seasons and such, try and control the population. But this is why Canada geese have become such a problem to a lot of humans because there's nothing you can do about it and they could protect it still on a level as if they were near extinction, which, you know, obviously they're not. I'm so glad about what they did though because I mean look at her she wouldn't even be there if they hadn't done what they did and there are so many beautiful 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 animals that would have been negatively affected if we had lost these majestic birds I think they're worth it you are worth the noise yes you are yes you are Mama loves the pretty bird. That's true. Anyways, I'm going to stop now because it was a really long video and I didn't mean for it to be so long. I apologize if I ran it on for a while there. But I do hope that you guys enjoyed hearing about how that law came to be and how we ended up with these residential geese in each of the states and what it means when you see a goose that sticks around. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just being raised by the descendants of the residential geese. And keep in mind, the oldest Canada goose that was ever discovered in the wild was around 48 years old. So if you count that up, that's what, like two generations back? Ish, if you have a family where the geese were really old. So there's a good possibility that this ain't even that foreign to these geese. This might be like this goose's grandma that actually was there was the one of the first residential geese. So it's pretty crazy actually how long these animals can live and they're actually very similar to parrots in that area who live for years to come and they are a lifetime commitment this goose ain't going nowhere for a really long time and however long it takes i don't care because i'm gonna be there for every minute of it right pretty bird right pretty bird are you mama's baby
Are you mama's baby? The bird. Are you mama's baby? Yeah, goose goose. Thank you for kisses. Ah! <laughs> that's that's her trying to groom me, by the way. So that was not her trying to bite me. Oh, bless you. What happened? Oh, I get hugs. Oh. Oh, the pretty bird. Oh. Good girl. No, don't eat that. Don't eat that. That's a bug repeller. I found these bug repellers that you can wear so you don't have to spray yourself. She keeps nibbling at it. She's like, ew, what is that? Silly goose. Silly goose. Alrighty, guys. If you enjoyed seeing Pretty Bird today, don't forget to hit the like button. Because it makes us really happy when we have lots of likes. Because, you know, it's a great thing when you're trying to build a channel. And you're trying to share, you know, your amazing pet with others. And it's nice to see that you guys enjoyed the video. I'm just going to tell the truth. Also, DD and Boots, they get super duper excited when there's lots of likes on the videos and when people comment on the videos. It just is what it is. And also, they get excited when stuff gets shared. So, leave some comments. Share the videos. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I just used my two small children to make you like, share, and comment. And I'm going to tell you another thing. My kids want me to grow this channel. So you have to subscribe for the children. <laughs> I'm just joking around, guys. But anyways, if you did enjoy the, the video, do hit that like button and leave us a comment with anything you want to let us know. You know, any suggestions, any experiences, anything that you can think of that you might want to add to the story I told about the Migratory Bird Act and about Canada geese that you might know. And uh, also, share the video with your friends and family if you think that they might enjoy seeing this adorable little goose. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. And if you did subscribe recently, welcome. We love having you. And we hope that Pretty Bird will bring as much joy to you as she has brought to us. Everybody say bye-bye. Say bye-bye, everybody. Can you tell them bye-bye, Pretty Bird? Say bye-bye. Goose, goose. Say bye-bye. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. Coo -coo -coo. Bye everybody. She's like, stop it, mom. Hey, bye. Say bye bye. You say bye bye. Love you. Bye, pretty bird flock.